Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Hymn of the Week. Pastor Harry told me today that this is episode number 37. So we have had many good hymn stories already uh, behind us. And there's a whole lot more hymns than 37 that have been written. So Hymn of the Week is going to continue for a while, at least. Well, here we are in the early parts of 2021 as we record this. It's January the 12th, I believe. We don't usually say the date, but at the beginning of the year, I think it's appropriate. Uh, at the end of 2020, we were all looking forward to a new year. 2020 was a tough year with the advent of the COVID virus and our dealing with it and the restrictions that we had to face. And there was a lot of hope for 2021 to be different. And we still have that hope that through the course of this year, things are going to improve. But at the moment, things are still hard. At the moment, we're still in this place of challenge and struggle. And so our hymn of the week and our text of the week speak to that perseverance that we need. And it's not perseverance that we drum up ourselves. It's perseverance from coming by, by looking to the one who gives us strength and gives us hope and builds within us a, a reserve so that we can persevere. So I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 7. It's a powerful text where Paul leads us through the means and the way in which we can persevere through difficulty and hardship. Let's go to it now. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. J.B. Phillips once translated this, We may be knocked down, but we're not knocked out. That's the message of our hymn of the week, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, by Ray Palmer, music by Lowell Mason. Our passage of the week assumes that there will be, we will experience trials of many kinds. Paul's word of encouragement to us is, so fix your eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Or as the writer to the Hebrews writes, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Ray Palmer, author of our Hymn of the Week, expresses his response in this way. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. He wrote this hymn when he was 22 years of age. 
He was born on November 12, 1808. His family had gone through difficult financial times, forcing him to quit his education during grammar school when he was only age 13. He found employment as a clerk in a dry goods store in Boston. He attended the Park Street Congregational Church there, where he experienced a conversion. It was this experience that motivated him to resume his education and become a minister. He attended Yale University and graduated in 1830. While attending university, he supported himself by tutoring in a private girls' school. He lived with the family of the director of the school and was still living there when he wrote the lyrics to this hymn. One day as he sat reading a German poem, depicting a repentant sinner kneeling before the cross, he was inspired to write his thoughts down in the form of a poem. He wrote, the words of these stanzas were born out of my soul without effort. I recall I wrote them with tender emotion. He wrote down the words in a little notebook that he carried with him and from time to time he would read them as part of his devotions. Ray Palmer had no thoughts of publishing his poem. He wrote, There was not the slightest thought of writing for another eye, least of all writing a hymn for Christian worship. It was two years later, while in Boston, he unexpectedly met an old friend, Dr. Lowell Mason, a musician who was at that time compiling a hymn book and he asked whether he knew of any good texts that he could include in his hymn book. As if prompted by the Holy Spirit, Ray Palmer handed him his little notebook. His friend asked for a copy. They stopped at a store to have one produced and Lowell put it in his pocket. He met his friend again two days later, and Lowell Mason excitedly said to him, Mr. Palmer, you may live many years and accomplish many things, but I think you will be best known to posterity as the author of My Faith Looks Up to Thee. His prediction proved true. Dr. Lowell Mason composed the music to this new hymn to a tune he called All of It and included it in his hymn book. Ray Palmer did become a pastor, a hymn writer, and a translator of Latin hymns, the best known of which is the hymn by the 12th century monk Bernard of Clairvaux, Jesus, Thou Joy of Loving Hearts. Despite all his accomplishments, Ray Palmer is best remembered for his first hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Some noted hymnologists have said it is the finest American hymn ever written. Note the sequence of the stanzas. Verse 1 expresses a prayer. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my sins away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly thine. Stanza two is a prayer for strength. May thy great rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. Stanza three, be thou my guide. Bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrows, tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. And stanza four anticipates death. Blessed Savior, then in love, fear and all distrust remove, 
O bear me safe above a ransomed soul. Listen to the music as played by Calvin and Heather Dick and follow the words by Ray Palmer on your screens. My faith looks up to thee, our hymn of the week.